Okay, guys, uh, welcome to this first collab between myself and my channel, Acrylic Four Art with G, and uh, Happy Artist Cash. Happy Artist Cash. Yeah, Happy Artist Cash, <laughs> and uh, amazingly, we both sort of in the Cape Town area. It's such a small world, and uh, this is this is very cool to do a collab with her. She does quite a lot of art as well, um, same stuff as I do, and I'm sure probably some other stuff as well. So I'm sure we'll chat about that. But Tash, thanks yes. for agreeing to the collab. It's really cool. Thank and, you. Uh, it's a great idea. Yeah. Now listen, we we might as well uh, join forces because uh, it's tough to make it on your own out there. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> very true, very yeah, true, for very sure. true. But guys, I think what we are going to do is, mm. so if you want to see the results yeah. of both our pause, um, just you know, head over to the other channel. We're going to put the links in the descriptions below. So head over there and see what the same color palette can look like using different techniques. I think you guys are going to be surprised at, at what comes yeah. up. So uh, what is your favorite technique? Tell my me. favorite technique. I think anything with cells is my favorite technique. Well, when I started, I started with the uh, tree ring paws, which were cool. I mean, you get some nice mm -hmm. grinding stuff out of that, but uh, I tended to find that they're all pretty similar. You know, you, you've got the spirals and you've got the different color, yeah. kind of, almost looking like a wormhole, you know, type vibe. Yeah. Um, and for yeah. me, with, with uh, putting a little bit of silicone in, I mean, it, it just makes such a difference to the painting that you do. Even now, if, you, if I do a tree ring pour, I'll put silicone in and just have the cells come up because just to make okay. it a little bit more interesting. But yeah, I, 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 haven't like, tried that I like all this, I like all the techniques. So. Okay. Yeah, at the moment, I think uh, I'm enjoying the flip cups. So um, I'd have to say that's my favorite. Yeah. And how about you? What's your What's your favorite technique? Uh, so my favorite technique, I started on the Dutch pour, um, not realizing how technical they actually mm. are. I just saw that you thin down your paint, which meant <laughs> less paint to be used. Um, so I went for that paint and water um, and made a mess of it for quite a while. So I, I perfected that first. And I think that's why I find it the most yeah enjoyable technique. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy the Dutch pour as well. My struggle um, is to get the spaces right on, on the Dutch pour rather than just sort of blowing out the whole thing. Yes. What, what, um, what type or brand of paints do you use? I mean, there's not very many in South Africa available. So I started on the little dollar to, uh, tubs that you get at pretty much any of the craft stores, just because they're the cheapest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then I've moved on to either using art jamming paints, um, their acrylics, and I also use the Gecko Art um, pre-mixed paints as well. Uh, okay. And yourself? Yeah, the, the main ones I use are uh, these Primart Iris. They come in these small tubes or the big 200 mil tubes. Um, and they, I mean, they're all pretty much the same wow. size, and then uh, the, one I, the one I use for metallics is this reed. Um, they've come in, come in like four different metallic colors. Okay. One of, the, the, one of the few brands I found that actually do metallic. So, just found a, a site called Bastion Paints. I've ordered a few one liter tubs just to okay. test them out. Um, and yeah, they've been working fine. Um, and they're probably, you know, per milliliter or whatever, they're probably half the price of buying it. I buy all my stuff online at uh, artattack.co.com. Wow. Yeah, it's been quite good yes. to find something a bit cheaper because, yeah, it's an expensive hobby. Very, it can get very, very expensive. Yeah. It's actually really interesting. I've used their silicone. Um, they're, they actually call it a, a cell former, and it's amazing. Um, and do you uh, go buy new canvases for every four? Do you go over old ones or...? Yes. So in the beginning, yeah, I, I used to repurpose my canvases because I have quite a few small boards that I test on first. Okay. Um, and I, yeah, I literally clean all the code off, prime them twice, wait for it to dry, and then reuse them. Um, because yes, buying canvases at the moment are it's it's a relatively expensive process. Um, so yeah, it's only really if I sell something that I end up buying another canvas to replace it. Yeah, I mean, yourself? I, I wish I had started like that because I'm sitting with like. 50 canvases that I've that I've poured and I've sort of put them online on Facebook and show them well I've given some to my friends and, and family. Yes. Um, but I haven't actually sold one yet. And so I'd like to test it for someone to buy one so I could get going. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So one thing I've learned is just because you don't like it doesn't mean somebody else isn't gonna like it. So yeah, you gotta give it a chance. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And wait, how do you um, sell your stuff? I mean, do you sell a lot of your stuff or 
I've sold about three so far. Um, and they're literally just at this point, it was painting just out of the fun of it. It's not a commission piece. Mm -hmm. um, and then I put them on Facebook marketplace, all the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. I looked into Etsy and some of the other places as well, but you land up having to pay money to keep them there. And I thought, well, oh, at this right. point, okay. I rather just want to put it out there. And if they sell, they sell. If they don't, they don't. I also think it's sort of Corona related because you know, people are struggling for cash and people have lost their jobs. Um, so they don't have extra money to just to buy a piece of art, totally. you know, put in, put in their lounge or whatever. So I'm hoping that's part of it, but uh, I guess we'll only know, you know, once we get out of this whole mess. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the last thing people are going to look at right now is buying art, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's at least a hobby that's keeping us safe, so. Are you, mm. are you an art, have you been an artist like from the beginning or is it this a new thing for you sort of branching into the art world? So I did art at school, okay. um, oil painting though. So <laughs> very, very different, fine art, oil painting. Um, so yeah, I think that's where I got a lot of the creativity from. Mm. Um, and I actually just stumbled upon it. A friend of mine gave me a gift. She, she poured two boards um, as a swipe basically, because she loves doing swipes. Um, so she gave me two boards and I said, wow, what is this? How did you do this? This is incredible. Mm. Um, yeah. And she explained it to me and I went, hmm, YouTube. And that's where I got sucked into the wormhole yeah, yeah. No, of I trying to figure out how to do that. pouring. And yeah, that's where I am now. Yeah. 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 No, I was you? the same. I, I think my son actually showed me a, cause my son's got his own little YouTube channel. He was doing like, you know, a bit of art and a bit of home science experiments and stuff. And he showed me this video of an acrylic pour and I was like, ooh, that looks cool. And uh, so we did, yeah. I did a with him. Um, and then, you know, after three or four, he lost interest as, as kids do. And I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Of course. So I'll just carry on doing it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've only been doing it for a year. Um, but I've already got no, yeah. no art background at all. I mean, I didn't do art in school. I'm, I'm, I, I like to think I'm creative, yeah. but I've got no sort of art skills. I can draw a little bit, but I, yes. I've never done painting or, yeah. or any of that thing. So yeah. for me, it's such a good yeah. way to express your creativity without having to have those, you know, those fine art skills or any art skills for that matter. I mean, you know, if, if yeah. you do everything properly and do it, you know, follow the exactly. steps, you can also get a, a good result, which I think is good for people who subscribe to our channels to see, you know, they can actually do this yeah. as well. It's not a difficult yeah. thing to do. Um, you just follow a few basic No, things. no, you don't need, you genuinely don't need any experience. No, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. So yeah. Uh, for me, that was, that was a bonus. And it really, it's given me something to do over the whole lockdown. I mean, you know, over the hard lockdown, those three months, I yeah. must have done, you know, I must have done two or three a week, maybe more. Yeah. Because yeah. when I started, probably the same with you, you know, I just learned everything from those YouTube channels. So I was like, oh, you know, this technique yeah. is cool when you try it. Or this color combination, or let me yeah. paint thinner or thicker or whatever. So, I mean, it's been really great yeah. that all this yeah. information is out there on YouTube. Um, and if, you know, if you're willing to yeah. go down the, the rabbit hole, you can, you can really start doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can, it's got a deep rabbit hole, yeah. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> and, and bring your wallet along as well, because it ain't cheap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Look, you can start off cheap, but I think I realized very quickly that if you do the cheap routes, you don't get the same results because the paint isn't the good enough quality. The medium isn't working properly. I mean, I even bought the wrong silicone altogether. So I wasn't developing cells and I was just like, I was pouring tons of silicone into my paint without realizing. So I thought more silicone, more cells, yeah. you know? So yeah, you start to realize you waste money doing it that way around. No, so, no exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool guys. So what we decided was um, just to show how the different techniques work. Um, Tash and I are going to use uh, the exact same color palette, um, but we're going to be doing it with different techniques. I said I was going to do a flip cup pour, so I'll be doing one of my triple flip cup pours. So you would have seen plenty of those on my channel in the last sort of month. Um, but I just love the technique at the moment, so I'm just going to do it again. And I think Tash said she's going to do an open cup. Yeah, an open cup pour. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I really, really love doing the open cup because it gives you the cells, but at the same time you can kind of control it a little, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah. I, actually the um, the first few open cup pours I did, I'm not really sure what I had done wrong, but I didn't get nearly as many cells as I thought I would, or, or from what I saw on, on people's channels. Okay. Um, and literally in the last two months, yeah. I've just been making my paints 
just way thinner than, than they normally are. Um, you know, when I yes. first started and they showed you yes. little trickle down, you know, the little mound should be there for three seconds or two seconds. Yeah, or and the mound. Yeah, now literally, yeah. I don't have a mound. Yeah. Um, I get it to the point where it's sort of, yeah. as, I, as I pour it on, it just sort of goes straight in. And since I've started doing that, I mean, the cells have been like exactly. ridiculous. So my, my reasoning is that the yeah. paint was too thick for so the, much the layers to come up. So we're gonna, the colors we're going to use are, we're going to have white as a base. Oh, yeah, and yes. Purple, and then we're doing pink your colors. pink and purple. And, and then, then a lime green, green and an aqua. Aqua is my favorite. Absolutely love it. Okay, cool. Is that the same as turquoise or is just a bit yeah. of a name, or is it a bit more bluer or... Yeah, yeah. I look, I look when, it gets, when you walk into the paint stores or a craft store, they have turquoise and then aqua and then another color and they all look the same, but they've got okay, different cool. names, but yes. Okay, Yeah, cool. pretty much turquoise. Okay, no, that, that'll be yeah. good. What are you, are you going to do it on a canvas or on a board or...? Yes, I'm actually doing it on one of those thin boards. So I'm, okay. yeah, propping it up with a box and I'm going to pour on one of the thin boards, yeah. Oh, nice. nice yeah, and yeah. you? Uh, I'm just going to stick to my 16 by 16 box canvas. Um, those are just the ones I like. Cool. Those are very nice ones. Yeah, I just like when you put them on yeah. the wall, they sort of give a bit more sort of depth, I guess, um, rather than mm. having to, I don't know what, what mm. you do as a flat one. Yeah, so at this point, I use them mostly as like my test subjects. Oh, okay. um, one I've actually given away, but then we make we make a frame, which I then nail to the back of them. Oh, nice. So, nice. Yeah. yeah, but that, well, that that's, gets... That's definitely more cost yeah. yeah, definitely more cost than <laughs> yeah. the box canvases. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should start doing that as Definitely. well. Definitely. <laughs> They're difficult to not uh, warp though. You've got to be so careful you don't oh, warp them. Right. Specifically with the thinner, yeah, with the thinner consistencies, there's a lot more water in your mix and it, they warp very, very quickly. So you've got to be so careful. I'm actually an amateur magician as well. Um, and I've got literally wow. like, I've got like wow. 50 or 60 um, card card boxes that I just had in like a CD rack. Um, and I found that you'll see on one of my videos, I found a box that I wanted to pour the top of. Um, and not thinking, you know, huh. it's, not, it's not canvas, it's cardboard. And so, you know, I did my whole pour with the swipe and stuff. And then the whole box just sort of bowed out like that. If you're watching this video on my channel, I'm going to now cut to my pour. And if you're watching this video on Tasha's channel, she's also going to cut to her pour. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, Cash, thanks for, for coming on my channel and thanks for having me on your channel. And, Thank uh, you for coming to my channel. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And we'll we'll uh, we'll chat later <laughs> once once everything's dry and then uh, maybe do another collab, you know, in the future sometime. Yes, perfect. Sounds great, Jim. Thanks, G. Cool. Thanks, Dash. Cut. Cheers, man. Yeah. Hi, guys. So as for our conversation that I just had with Dee, I'm going to be doing an open cup pour. Now I'm quickly going to speed through the first one that I did because I landed up scraping it. Like I've said right in the beginning when I first started my channel, I want to share these mistakes with you so that you don't do them and land up wasting paint. So the first thing that I was trying to do here was create a vine that's growing up the side of the canvas and then flowering from the top. But I didn't use a small enough open cup. I probably should have gone for a funnel or something like that, especially for the flowers, because it landed up being too blown up and too huge, really. So, this is not a problem. All you have to do is make sure that you scrape off the color. I then used a paper towel just to wipe off any excess color so that it doesn't come back through the canvas when I re-pour. I did not wipe off all the white, just the part where there was color. I then poured white back down again and leveled it out. I'm gonna go for something completely different now because I don't wanna try the same thing and fail again because then I'm probably gonna become quite despondent. Another tip when it comes to the open cup pour. Something that you'll notice in the previous one, I started the open cup at the edge of the canvas and worked my way in. And what lands up happening is when you lift the open cup or toilet paper roll, whatever you're using, it lands up leaving a blob of colors that you've poured and it has really no purpose. And you always try and find a way to wreck it or put squiggles in it or add more color blow it out to try and make it look like something. I've got a solution for you. Start in the middle and work your way to the edge. That way, you'll always make sure that it looks blended in in the middle of the canvas and doesn't have the bulb or leftover paint at the end. 
This time I went for slightly different composition of colors. You will have noticed that I added silicone to each of the colors, not the white. And if you're wanting to know what consistency you should be using for the open cut pour, there's a card at the top and in the description below so that you know what consistency you should be using and how I've mixed my paints for this technique specifically. You'll see in the time lapse, I noticed that the paint was starting to push off to the top because the box or the canvas is not level. So I propped it up just to make sure I don't lose all the paint off the top of the canvas and lose the composition that I was working with. There will always be some movement, especially when your consistency is in the lower numbers. The thicker the consistency, the less movement there's going to be, but also the less cells. Don't forget to pop over to the channel Art with G just to have a look and see what his creation looked like. I hope you have a magical day. Ciao for now. Are we winning? Uh, sorry about that. First, I said lost connection. No. My battery on my camera ran out. So I was like, just trying to get everything. Oh my God. Uh, you know, tech, tech never works when you want it to work. So. And then I actually used a tissue paper. You used a tissue paper. Wow. The higher the consistency, sorry, let's put it like this. Blah, 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 blah,